All right, Don Peebles, in case you don't know him, he's a very big player in the Democratic Party, a very close advisor uh, to presidents past uh, and present, including uh, Barack Obama, with whom he was quite close. Uh, but he doesn't like what he's seeing right now out of New York Attorney General uh, Tish James. And, and, and one of the things that he has mentioned about Letitia James is the fact that, well, he thinks she's a good attorney general. I believe that is still his view. I think now, Don, you think that she's going too far on, on this, you know, Give us more than four to fifty million dollars, uh, and if you don't, we start selling buildings. What's your worry? Well, I think I've gone very far. I think that she's made a mistake. I think this whole case against Trump—it's a victimless um, case that should never have been brought. And had it not been him, it never would have been brought because they've never brought a case like this before against any other business or business person. And so I think that. That is an example of why Trump continues to rise in the polls because they are making him into a martyr. Now, um, the commercial real estate impact uh, is, is real. I mean, if Donald Trump does have to start selling buildings or putting up collateral based on those buildings and apparently can't even do that, um, that, could, that could make a, a tough situation in this city worse, couldn't it? Absolutely, it could. I mean, already New York is perceived as being very difficult to do business in essentially an anti-business environment. And during the pandemic, there was a mass exodus out of New York City to places like Florida and Texas. This amplifies, this case amplifies that it's very difficult to do business in New York. And if you happen to be a successful, wealthy entrepreneur, watch out because the government can be used to weaponize you, especially if you get out of line and do something that the far left doesn't like, they will not hesitate to use the legal system to disrupt your business or worse, to put you in jail. Do you think that is why a number of companies, businesses and, and, and rich guys in and around this city are holding them off giving any money uh, to Donald Trump to help them out because they're afraid they become targets? Well, I think that there is a hesitancy to speak out on this issue because they don't want to um, suffer the consequences or perceived consequences of doing that. I think more that, I mean, this is a business problem, not a political problem to Donald Trump. And I don't think his supporters um, would see that this is a action that they should step up to do to help him with his bond because it's solving a business issue. So yeah. he has to solve this issue on his own and hopefully he will. Um, but uh, I think if you look what's happening in Florida, for example, uh, Paulson is having a big fundraiser for him uh, very shortly where the ticket price is up to 800 and some odd thousand dollars and it's sold out already from what I understand. Yeah, you're talking about Don Paulson, the big billionaire investor. Uh, let me get your sense, Don, then. You know uh, Letitia James. Uh, have you ever talked to her and say, you know, love you dearly, but this is, is, is going to kill the city. This is, this is going too far. There's got to be some middle ground. Any conversations like that? No, look, I've, I, I've been a, a long-term supporter of hers because she's been an advocate of small women and minority-owned businesses since she's been on the city council, and she continues to do that. I have expressed concern that I think that this is a very slippery slope to selectively enforce an archaic law that has got no victim. Um, and I do, do you think she went to, too far um, here, in other words, that this is wiping out whatever gain she has? She does seem to have it out for him, whether you agree or disagree with this whole civil suit in the first place, it's unprecedented. We've never seen it used, and certainly of this magnitude. And then putting up the same size punishment as collateral or upfront bond money going forward. It's like a double whammy. It seems crazy. Yeah, it does. In fact, frankly, if she's confident in her case, she should let the former president take up his appeal without trying to impede his ability to do that and not to rush to seize his assets. And why is she then? I, well, you're appeal. a good business, and why is she? I mean, is she thinking he's a flight risk? He's the most recognized face on the planet. He's running for the highest office in the land. He can't hide in a, a Luxembourg cave. Uh, so what is she worried about? That, that if he uh, is, you know, ultimately fails in this appeal attempt, that, you know, he'll have to pay up. Bottom line, it's a civil matter. He becomes president of the United States. Oh, I don't think it's about his ability to pay. I don't think they think of him at a flight risk. I think so it's they a vendetta. Think they will get it can only be a vendetta. Right? No. Yeah. And, and, Neil, I think they are confident or they think it's likely that this will get reversed. 
and then there will be no punishment. So they're rushing to, in, to inflict as much pain on him as they can right now, because once the appeals court puts an end to this, then there will be no repercussions, and this case would have been brought for naught. So to disrupt his business, disrupt him now, distract him from the campaign, um, that's the tactic. That's the goal. And that's why I think this is so wrong. I think if they felt they had a legitimate um, issue here and there was a loss, if Deutsche Bank lost $400 yeah. million, then yes, bring it on, especially if $400 million and the taxpayers had to Got suffer it. any kind of consequence for that. But not this. 